Well, hello again. Here we are, pre-trib moment number five. Well, I talked in an earlier pre-trib moment about um, the fruits of pre-trib rapture belief versus the fruits of post-trib rapture belief. Now I want to talk about who all believes in a post-trib rapture. You see, you can oftentimes tell about a movement, about a doctrine, when you see who all believes and teaches it. Okay, now the post-tribbers want you to believe that post-tribulation rapturism is something that's been taught by Bible-believing Christians for centuries. We've always believed in a post-trib rapture. Nonsense. And what I'm going to show you right now is in fact not from the Bible. So what are you talking about? Right here. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Okay. Now I don't know if I can do this or not. I'm going to see if I can get in here behind the camera. Down here, the church's ultimate trial. Before Christ's second coming, the church, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies uh, her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a relig religious deception offering men uh, an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. Down here it says the church will enter the glory of the kingdom only through this final Passover when she will follow her Lord in his death and resurrection. Okay, there you can see the page. Okay. This is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Hmm. You know, that sounds kind of to me like the Catholic Church teaches a post-tribulation rapture. Or at least that Christians go, you know, Christians go through the tribulation. Why is that? Well, you see, because the Catholics believe in works for salvation. And the weird part about it is they're actually right. If you go into that time of Jacob's trouble, there is an element of works involved with your salvation. It's faith and works. That's why they'll quote verses of Scripture and take verses of Scripture to talk about faith and works, and they try to apply it to today. See, Catholics don't rightly divide the word of truth either. You see, they read verses about in the Old Testament where they're building temples and overlaying things with gold, and they build temples and overlay things with gold. They read stuff in the Old Testament about a priesthood, and they have a priesthood, you see. They read things about building kingdoms, working for kingdoms, they work for kingdoms. See? The church is a physical thing on the earth. If you're Catholic. Or if you're non-dispensational really. Because it was in the Old Testament. You see? And the Bible does teach faith and works for a tribulation saint. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ. And you can't take the mark. Faith and works. It's right there. So you see... It's a Catholic teaching, really, if you want to get right into it. Catholics are teaching that Christians go through the tribulation, through the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because Catholics aren't into believing in Israel either. They have no respect for the Jewish people. They believe in replacement theology. And those that are post-trib, they're also replacement theology. I mean, how can't you be if you believe that Christians, if the body of Christ goes through this time period, well, what's the focus on? The focus is here on the body of Christ, not on the nation of Israel. So it doesn't work. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, you can't be anything but pre-tribulation rapture. You say, I don't know about this thing of uh, faith and works. I don't know about that. That's heresy. You're preaching another gospel. Oh, it would be heresy if I was preaching it for today, but I'm not preaching it for today. I'm preaching it for the time of Jacob's trouble. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 says, 
but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You say, well, that's for Christians. Yeah, it's just saying that, you know, in terms of, of rewards, it, no, it means exactly what it says. You have to endure to the end to be saved. I'm not enduring to the end of anything right now to be saved. My sins are paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't have to worry about it. I am His redeemed, His, his uh, purchased possession. And I'm going to be redeemed someday. The redemption of the purchased possession there in Ephesians, that's talking about the rapture. When the Lord says, okay, I bought you, now I'm going to take you home. See? It's like calling ahead and saying to the store, hey, I want this item, reserve it for me. Here's my payment. And the store holds on to that item until you come and get it and take it home. That's the way it is with the body of Christ right now. I don't have to endure to the end of anything to be saved. My salvation is finished. It's complete. Okay? But now if I had to go into the time of Jacob's trouble, and now all of a sudden everything that I have to buy, go into the grocery store and, and money and everything else, I have to take a mark of the beast, and I decide, well, I really kind of need to get some food at the grocery store, so yeah, I'll take the mark, yeah, I'll worship the beast. Guess what? My salvation goes away. Faith and works. How can you reconcile it? You can't reconcile it. You have to rightly divide it. And if you don't rightly divide, you're disobeying Scripture. I'll give you another verse on works in this time period. Works, faith and works. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Enduring to the end to be saved. It's right there. And by the way, why would there be a book called Hebrews? I thought Jew and Gentile were one in Christ. Why write to Hebrews? Why not say Christians? Because the distinctions between Jew and Gentile, right now there is no distinction, but in the time of Jacob's trouble there will be. In the time of Jacob's trouble you have two different groups, Jews and Gentiles. Okay? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 27, one of the most commonly cited passages for those who teach that you can lose your salvation. And you know what? They're right. They're right. These passages do teach that somebody can lose their salvation, but you read the book, the entire book, the context, you know, it's talking about tribulation saints. That's who the book is written for. Let's read this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27 says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. What is this fiery indignation we're reading about? Why don't you read Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 11 sometime and see what that fiery indignation is. It's given to any man, is what the Bible says, that takes the, the, the mark and worships the beast. That's what it's talking about. You see, after you receive the knowledge of the truth, that time of Jacob's trouble comes, you miss the rapture, you go into the thing, you're going, man, I wasn't really saved. I need to get saved. I have to be saved you know, Lord Jesus, please, you know, and, and you get saved in that time of Jacob's trouble. You receive the knowledge of the truth. And you receive the knowledge saying, I can't take the mark. The Bible says if I do, I'll go to hell. So you receive the knowledge of the truth. But after a while, you know, you're so hungry and you say, you know what? I got to take it. I mean, you know, God's going to understand. God knows my heart, <laughs> you know. And so you go and you sin willfully by taking the mark and worshiping the beast, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. See? In that time period, that's the way it's going to happen. Now, right now, there isn't anything like that. If you sin after the flesh, you will die. You'll lose rewards. You'll lose testimony. You'll lose all kinds of things. You know? But you won't lose your salvation. See? Those verses in Hebrews are meant to be taken literally. And a lot of the brethren try to spiritualize it to try and make it fit with eternal security for the body of Christ, and it doesn't fit. Okay? Read the Bible literally. Okay? That's usually the way you want to look at it, unless it's clearly figurative. Alright? Like Jesus saying, as Moses lifted up the Son of Man, and, or as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Well, Jesus isn't saying that, you know, I have to be lifted up like a snake on a, on a pole or something, or whatever. He's just speaking figuratively. Okay? There are 
verses of scripture that are figurative, but a lot of it's literal. Okay, be careful when people start to spiritualize things. It's very dangerous. And finally, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 says, Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you have faith plus works in that time of Jacob's trouble. And you'll see this thing. I mean, you know, hey, I'm a man of science. I'm a man of proof, of documentation. Okay? What you can do, if you want proof of what I'm saying, what you can do, if you say, oh, I don't know about the Catholic Church teaching it, look it up. I think there's a, a, a No Excuses or something like this, some Franciscan friar, some effeminate little monk someplace that doesn't know the Bible at all. But look at his arguments. They're the same thing as post Trivers. Same exact thing. And what does he say? He says, we have to suffer and join our sufferings with Christ's and thereby merit salvation. See? It's Catholic. Catholic. The thing of, I have to join my sufferings to those of Christ. You know, right now, that's Catholic. And that's what exactly what these post tribbers are teaching. They are teaching that you have to suffer through that time. And you have to endure to the end. It doesn't work. That does not work for a Christian in the church age. All right? It's not, hey, the people for the last almost 2,000 years, they got in without anything but faith alone. But now all of a sudden, the body of Christ is going to go faith and works. No. There's a dispensational change. Something happens there. And now God dispenses salvation by a new means. You will not be bought by the blood of Jesus Christ in that time period and have your sins completely taken away. You're going to have to endure to the end to be saved. Don't fall for this post-trib rapture lie. It's taught that Christians, you know, Christians go through the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation time period. It's taught in the catechism. But it's not taught in the Bible. Do not be deceived.